I'll be honest. I don't know what we're doing today. I, I know the, the overarching idea. I don't know which story, though. You want to know what we're doing today? Of sure course. do. Let's get the podcast started first, then. All right. Do it. Welcome back to Fives the Crowd. Hello. Hi. Hola. <laughs> we'll be, I'm excited. That's this, all right. This gets me excited. I like excited Zach. Um, I can see a nipple. Well, I don't like excited Just Zach. Kidding. I like Sorry. <laughs> happy Zach. <laughs> what? I'll let you. I'll let excited Zach be for Kara. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> your pork got bigger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keep that <laughs> lipstick your pork in your showing. pocket. <laughs> <laughs> your pork showing. It does that. <laughs> it pulses. <laughs> starts getting tighter. <laughs> Zach's neck starts. He's like, ah. <laughs> guys, I think you guys. connected the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's like, this pulls him down like this. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like starting off murder yeah. podcast with yeah. some laughter. This is yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I will be your host for tonight, and we are gonna. I'm gonna try to make this as. It's it's gonna be dark, um, but I will try to make it as as uplifting as possible if it is possible. Okie dokie. Um, but before we get going, I would like to introduce your friends for the evening, the crowd, my best friends. Hey. Aww. Yes. And your new best friends. And yes. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's and Cam. And Chris. And Cam. And Cam. And Cam. <laughs> I got Tony. Hello. Austin. Hey. Chris. Hey. And Cam. Hello. So, um, tonight, gentlemen. Viewer and listener discretion advised. Yes. Um. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. Yeah. yeah. If Zach's hosting, be ready. <laughs> so tonight, I would like to talk about the most notorious UK murderers. Oh, is this the Rip? Ooh. Ooh. Rip U- Van Winkle? UK, What's his name? Jack, Rip- Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. UK, United Kingdom. Okay. Is Jack the Ripper in UK? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it Jack the Ripper? He might be on the list. I don't know. You oh, wait. oh, it's a He's list. He's for sure yeah. on the list. You know, you know. <laughs> he does. You wrote the list. <laughs> I thought. I thought you were just doing one. No. Oh. I did no. two originally. I decided to go a little. Well, we're on an Oscar. It. We're on for the ride. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. just happened. How many? Uh, or it's, oh, okay. No, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was like a top ten or something no, like no. that. Top it's, it's just a list. I just go over like <sighs> I think about four or five of them. Oh, great. So I, I kind of went through a list and kind of kind of picked out some good ones. So this is your list? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Zach's top no, five. No, that's great. <laughs> I know. Like I said, I, I found, I think it was a ranker, and I kind of went through and just oh, found I the- I forgot about ranker. Yeah, I found the, like, the best ones. I kind of read up about them and found the best ones that I could talk about. All right, all right. So, okay. Uh, Sounds like a pose. <laughs> a what? The, the ranker. The ranker. <laughs> Um, so I will start out with William Burke and William Hare. They were active from 1827 to 1828. Okay. So just one year. One year. Huh? One year. Okay. So it's it's a pair. Yes. The Williams. Yes. So Hare, uh, he immigrated from Scotland, or to Scotland from Ireland, um, and then um, he became a, a keeper of a lodging house in Edinburgh where he met William Burke, um, also Irish, Irish born. Uh, on November 29th, an old pensioner died in the house um, that Hare and Burke were running. Okay. Um, angry that the deceased still owed four pounds in rent, they devised a plan to steal the corpse from its coffin and sell it to recover the money he was owed. With Burke's aid, the pair sold the corpse to Robert Knox, a surgeon, for seven pounds and ten shillings. The profit <laughs> led the two men, assisted by their common law wives, during the following months to entice at least 15 unknown wayfarers into the lodging house, where they got them intoxicated and then smothered them in order to leave no trace of violence. Um, afterwards, they would sell the corpses to Knox's School of Anatomy. Oh my gosh! 
Burke and Hare were exposed when neighbors and police discovered their murder of a local woman on October 31st, 1828. Wow. So from November uh, 1827 to October 1828, 15 people. 15? 15. Could you imagine all this started from five bucks? Right? Right. You owe us five yep. bucks. You owe us five, yeah. It's much. four pounds, Four right? pounds, yeah. Four pounds is like seven bucks. Yeah, whatever it is. Six yeah. bucks. Jeez. Well, now. When <laughs> yeah. was this? 18 what? 1828. <laughs> According to my calculations. Wait, we weren't even a country. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> we was babies. <laughs> <laughs> did we even have our own currency back then? Yeah. We did. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might have done a barter and trade. I don't know. Dude, I'd love this was to 100 that years later. I'm pretty sure we had cuz we were 1776. Yeah. 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 This is I don't know if we had dollars, man. I'm just wondering. So what is 4 pounds? No way. Is that it? No, that can't be right. No. What 6 is that? bucks. Is that <laughs> about 2 oh, quarters for dollars. <laughs> that's crazy though. Anyways, while you're How looking much? that up, so this is how they made their living? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they decided for a year. that. Yeah, for a year. <laughs> for a year, yeah. So, um, 556 pounds today is what that would be worth. Oh, 556 pounds. So four pounds back then is now worth 556. So it's 556 like 700 pounds. bucks. And our money is like. Six hundred ninety-three dollars and fifty-four cents. Yeah. Seven hundred bucks. So seven hundred bucks. <laughs> nice. Seven hundred bucks. Um, so uh, wow. Hare, uh, William Hare, uh, ended up turning in um, evidence, and along with his wife Margaret, they testified against Burke and his wife Helen. Oh. Uh, Hare eventually was released and never heard of again. He split. He got out as quick as he could. Burke, on the other hand, was tried for murder, found guilty, and hanged. Oh, jeez. In his confession, though, he exonerated Knox of all the knowledge of the crimes, um, but it took some years for Knox to get to live down the, the, the condemnations of the public and the press. Do you think he really they, had no idea? You, you're a school, and you take these bodies into study and he research. Like pled the fifth. I mean, there's they did it in a way where there was no way that, like, they smothered them, so there's no violence. Yeah, but you gotta no wonder. I mean, like, how are you coming by right? all these dead people? Coming by fifteen all these people over dead people. There's no yeah. like, there's no legal way they were finding it because I th buying a body back then was illegal. Yeah, like they weren't even allowed to. I don't even think they were allowed to experiment on dead bodies for a long time. Benjamin <laughs> Franklin, like a few years ago, his house, like Benjamin the, Franklin, a few years ago, it, the house of Benjamin Franklin. A few, not even a few years ago, like last year, oh. they found multiple remains of bodies in his basement. Oh, dang. And they're fairly certain that him and someone else were experimenting on cadavers. He was like they were, them hide the they were studying cadavers. Yeah. No, he was making them hold the hmm. kite string. <laughs> also, uh, the dollar was made in 1792. Really? That fast, huh? There you go. Yeah. And it was backed um, by gold back it then? Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was the first reserve. currency in the world to adopt the decimal system. Dumb. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we like precision. Interesting. Well, wait, wait. Pennies. What, Stupid what about pennies. shillings? Shillings were still, I think, a whole. They were still a whole thing. Yeah. 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 Like a shilling. Well, freak. so was a know. penny. <laughs> no, like they were bigger somehow. But like you got shilling. pounds and shillings. <laughs> freak, I don't know, dude. Do I look British? <laughs> I think one was a dollar and one was five dollars instead of. I half think of a, a shilling dollar. is less than a pound, because they sold the body for like seven pounds five shillings or something like that. Mm. It was denominations of dollars, maybe. <laughs> maybe instead of cents, having cents, which is the decimal. They used um, they used slashes, not decimals. <laughs> Kidding. We got to move on. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Tony's having none of this crap. <laughs> <on that one. laughs> Anyways, it was um, one twentieth of a pound. Go. <laughs> so a fraction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my hell. All right. So uh, Knox's wife Helen was released after the jury found that uh, the charges against her were not proven. She later moved, but was haunted by the vigilante seeking her death. 
Um, interesting fact, Burke's skeleton was conveniently giving, given to an anatomical museum of the Edinburgh Medical School where, as of 2022, it, it remained on display. Irony. So, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Karma? Right. Just I also love that you're wearing a, a this three-leaf clover. Yeah, why? Because this happened in Ireland, right? Yeah. But isn't they famous for the four-leaf clover? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> but What's the, the next story? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. I love it. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not? <laughs> That's the lucky one. <laughs> the po- okay. Anyways, all right. <laughs> I'm I'm a, little, I'm a little lost. I'm sorry. Uh, All right, let's go. It's an Irish thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't the Irish have the four leaf clovers? Yes, they have three leaves as well. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky if you find the fourth leaf. And they're Uh-oh. green and have red hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 12:30 at night, and I'm a little tired. <laughs> No, we're just, <laughs> we all might be a little too yes. tired. <laughs> all right. Continuing on. Uh, Peter Sutcliffe. <laughs> what, he did Peter what do? Cliff? Yeah. <laughs> Sutcliffe. Oh, oh. Sut. Okay, 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 Sutcliffe, okay. a.k.a. the Yorkshire Ripper. No wonder why he Ugh. killed. He <laughs> was active. Terrible name. He was active from 1975 to 1980. Oh, this what? Is five years? Like, and yeah. died actually November of 2020. Holy crap! Oh dang! So dang. in 1981, uh, Peter Sutcliffe was identified as the serial killer that the British press had dubbed the Yorkshire Ripper. Uh, from 75 to 80, uh, he committed at least 13 murders, and in seven other brutal assaults on women in Northern England. Um, basically, uh, attacks continued spurring a years long manhunt, um, that incorporated an estimated 2.5 million police hours. Oh my Holy gosh. Crap. So over the course of five years. Uh, yeah. That's so, insane. uh, he was convicted in 1981 of murdering 13 women in Yorkshire and Manchester between 75 and 1980. Uh, and the brutal crime victims were often battered with a hammer, Ugh. as well as being stabbed and mutilated with a knife or sharpened screwdriver. Wow. Oh, dang. At his 1981 trial, he was found uh, guilty of attacking seven other women um, in the same time period. Uh, these victims survived, though, with lasting trauma and severe injuries. Um, he had another confirmed victim in 1969. Um, that he had used a sock with a stone in it to strike a woman. Holy crap. She, however, survived but declined to press charges. What? Why? I don't know. And he was eventually sentenced to life in prison and died in 2020. Jeez. So. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know why she wouldn't press charges, but. Yeah. Wow. So imagine if she would have pressed charges. That was 1969, and he didn't start his killings until 1970, so a year later. Oh, man. Imagine if she would have pressed charges. Who knows what would have happened? But, I mean, you don't want to put that on her, but. You know it's, she thinks it, though. Right? It might be I, one I of those, uh, like, you know, you hear about those rape situations where they don't want to come forward because yeah. of People whatever don't believe reason. them. Yeah. Different times. So. so. Uh, next on the list, John Martin Scripps. He was executed in April of 1996. Oh, damn. Jeez. So this guy's insane. He killed at least three people in Singapore and Thailand and was investigated for other murders in Belize, Mexico, and the U.S. His modus operandi was to pose as a tourist and converse with other randomly chosen Caucasians either aboard their flights or while waiting at the airports. He stayed in the same hotels as the victims in a room near theirs. Once he had an excuse to be in their rooms, he used an electroshock weapon to immobilize them before killing them by striking with their heads with a hammer, and then he would cut them up in their bathrooms. Oh, my God. Um, One of the the people were actually found in a river uh, just 
bagged up body parts just floating down the river. Oh my gosh. So, um, it's almost like Dexter. Mm -hmm. The reason he chose Caucasians as his victims was because they were vacationing far away from their home countries, which made him less likely to be discovered. His motive apparently included money as large amounts were withdrawn using the credit cards. Uh, he was eventually arrested in Singapore. Uh, photographs of decomposed body parts were shown as evidence during his trial, making it one of the most grisly ever heard in Singapore. Um, he was sentenced to death by hanging, making him the first Briton uh, since Singapore's independence from Britain and Malaysia to be given the death penalty. Wow. That's crazy. Dang. That's so. racist. <laughs> <laughs> Think twice about the people you meet on when you're on vacation. No right? joke. I don't man. talk to people. Yeah. I don't trust any of them. <laughs> Bunch um, of murderers. Especially in California. Just sketchy people, man. <sighs> what? Truth. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I just. Oh, I oh. thought there was some merit behind that. No, no. no. Just, oh. just the one story that we did on uh, what what hotel? Uh, hotel. Was that? The, the Cecil. 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 Cecil yeah. The Cecil Hotel. Skid Row. Skid Row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this next guy, he, he's insane. You, you're going to get a little of this one. Oh, I'm loving him also. Yeah. <laughs> get, get a little of this one. <laughs> Harold Shipman. <Taking> notes. <laughs> Wait, what was his name? Harold Shipman. Oh. Okay. Yes. Uh, he was active from 1971 to 2000. Oh my gosh. And he passed away. 30 years? Passed away January of 2004. Okay. Uh, Shipman was born in a working class family in Manchester. Uh, he was particularly close to his mother, who died of lung cancer at the age of seventeen. Um, when when he was seventeen, his mom passed away of lung cancer. Um, her death came in a manner similar to what later became Shipman's own modus operandi. In the later stages of her disease, she had morphine administered at a home by a doctor. Uh, he witnessed his mother's pain subside despite her terminal condition. Um, he became a, so basically come in, get morphine, watch everything kind of disappear, even though she's in pain. Um, so later he ends up becoming a general practitioner, uh, for the majority of his career. Uh, he was at one point, um, working for one city. I can't remember what it was. And then he became addicted to some drugs he was found out all this stuff they basically fired him and see you later he ended up going to rehabilitation packed up left there and then um ended up becoming a general practitioner um elsewhere in i can't remember what it was i thought i had it written down but anyways he traveled to another city ends up becoming a general practitioner there where he spent majority of his time and becoming actually a uh good citizen of the town and all that stuff. Everybody trusted him. Okay. Great guy. Um, Did it say what medicine he practiced in or just? Just general. General? Yep. Just a general doctor. Okay. Just one you'd typically go see. Um, March 1998, uh, Linda Reynolds of the Brook Surgery. Oh, so it was in Hyde that he became a general practitioner in. Um, expressed concerns to John Pollard, the coroner of the South Manchester District, about the high death rate among Shipman's patients. In particular, she was concerned about the large number of cremation forms for elderly women that he had needed countersigned. Police were unable to find sufficient evidence to bring charges. A few months later, in August, a taxi driver by the name of John Shaw told the police that he was suspected ship Shipman you got me guessing on that word now. <laughs> um, of murdering 21 patients. Oh my God. Shaw became suspicious as many of the elderly, cust elderly customers he took to the hospital, who seemed to be in good health, died in his care, in, in Shipman's care. Uh, in 1998, one of his patients, an 81-year-old woman, uh, was discovered dead in her home only hours after uh, Shipman visited her. Her family was perplexed by the suddenness of her death, as she appeared to be in good health, by the fact that her will also had been changed to benefit Shipman, uh, oh. which bequeathed her entire estate 
valued at some 400,000 pounds or euros, 400,000 euros to him. Wow. So this is what got him caught. This is what's weird. This is what got him caught. So um, he insisted on no autopsy as well was necessary for her death. Um, he was later arrested on the 7th of September, 1998, and was found to own a brother typewriter of the type used to make the forged will. Really? That's what got him caught. So he forged this will for this woman Dean. to take all of her estate and caught basically oh with gosh. the typewriter that did it. Oh, brother. <laughs> 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 no. I'll wait. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> in 2000, he was charged with the murders of 15 women by lethal injections of diomorphine, uh, which is basically like heroin. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> He from don't punch that in your port. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from he was also um, mm -hmm. basically they estimated from 1971 to 2000. He was estimated to kill 250 women. Oh wow. my gosh! Is what they estimated him out to be 250 women that he oh had. How killed. did no one ever sue him for like malpractice? No but kidding. It, Got Jeez. away with it. I don't know. Euthanized. Just the, just the way. He's a doctor. He basically, it's almost like he had that power. It was a power that nobody could take away from. I don't know. Oh, yep. my 250 gosh. women. Like I said earlier, one of the one of the people tried to stop him and turn him into the police, but there was no not, a, not enough evidence. Like they were, everything that he was doing was covering his track, tracks wow. completely. Wow. That is crazy. Until he got so, Brady. Um, so and had, yeah, had he not forged that will, yep. he could have still been going. Yep, which they think that well, he possibly today, did that because either A, he wanted to be caught and he was just done, or B, he was literally trying to just retire and be done, like just trying to get out, and he just made that mistake. Um, but you can't retire on 400000 What was his, I mean, like, what was, is there any, like, motive? Um, yeah, so they just, believe it all came back to... Um, his mother, seeing his mother pass away at, at that early age something when he was young, in his something brain just triggered because yeah. most of the people at the 250, I want to say the majority, if not all, were were um, elderly people, like around his mother's yeah. age. And so they were also thinking it could have been a motive of um, what do you call it when you try to get rid of people who are causing a over a certain age and they're just a cause to society for healthcare and. Doctor, it, what was it's it? it, it's What's what it's what uh, Doctor Thanos was trying to do with the snap. That that was also his name, Doctor Death. He's a liability. No. What was Thanos trying to do? He was trying to. It's, Kevorky? Doctor uh, Kevorkian. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're saying. Rid the world of the Kevorkian. No. <laughs> population know, control. The yeah, there you go. Yeah, population control of the elderly people who were causing the system to, you know be more expensive or whatever. Gotcha. I think he's just a creep. Yeah, well, exactly. So, Is there um, a Netflix thing on this guy? Because I that's kind of... You saying Dr. Death, Yeah, he was familiar. He was also there known was as Dr. Death, but Dr. I don't know Death. if it's the same guy. I don't oh. think so, because that guy was just... It's kind of like he just was a crappy doctor. Yeah. Oh. So And he um, just kept doing things that... practice. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, the 15 women that he was actually accused of... Um, he did that all between 1995 and 1998. Um, he was basically sentenced to life in prison, um, but he ended up committing suicide by hanging himself in a cell in January wow. 2004. Pansy. So. So I mean, at that, at, if that's the case, I don't think he did it to get caught. Like, why would he do it to get caught to just hang himself in a cell? A was he point. waiting for? He was way. he was probably know. just trying to escape. Yeah. Get yeah. out of it. Probably just trying to get out and was stupid. You never know what those people are thinking though. Exactly. Maybe he wanted, the clout. He wanted to be on the news. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, usually you're pretty narcissistic. That is something I I do like that's happening a lot more now is a lot of the at least news outlets and places where I get my news, it seems like if there's 
like a school shooting or something, they legit try to like bar the name. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, 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 don't give them any they notoriety. Don't share, yeah. Yep. It's all about the victims, and I love that. Yep. Yep. But not. Th- yeah, 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 we, yeah, we yeah, understand. I don't love the news, but I love yes. that they're not sharing. That they're not trying to give out the yeah. person who did it all. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, and last but not least on the list, I went through those ones kind of quickly because this you next did. one is going to be a long one. Is it a long one? Good. I was nervous because you were like burning through those. I'm like, this is going to be like a 15 minute yeah. podcast. No, I, I want to okay. go through those ones pretty quickly because this last one I wanted to spend more time on. Good. Jack the Ripper. Ah! Yeah. Hold <laughs> it. Yep. Jack, yes. You Jack can't talk the, about murder. You can't, yeah, you can't talk about murder in the UK yes. without acknowledging Jack the Ripper. I love it. Speaking of notoriety. <laughs> what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I get what you did there. I mean, you oh, just said, we just said you can't that, yeah. not mention him. Yeah. Like, I mean, so, the guy's long dead and he's going to be talked about forever. So. Well, because no one knows yeah, who he is. Yeah, because no one knows who he is to this day. I know who he is. Who? Jack. He's, uh, what's his name? The serial killer that came here to um, America. Mm. Um, I bet you talk about it. I will. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so he was active from 1888 to 1891. So it, it, it's insane. Like he... So oh, three years? Three years. That's yeah. it? Yeah, but he like oh. tortured lo- all of London. Like they were I, three years of hell. Really? We'll get into it. I, I know if you nothing. guys are okay with I it. I only know. Get the into name. it, bro. Okay. Get I'm, get into it. I mean, there Terrified. there are details on here, so I mean, I just Horrified. okay. It's gonna get it's gruesome. Gonna get gruesome. Okay. Yes. So, Ugh. just a <laughs> little just a little background. October 1888, London's Metropolitan Police Service estimated that there were 62 brothels and about 1,200 women working as prostitutes in Whitechapel. Goodness. Um, How many? 1,200. 1,200 women. 12 in, in Whitechapel. Is that a church or it's is a that a district? It's a district. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, of London. Gotcha. With approximately 8,500 people residing in the 233 common lodging houses within Whitechapel every night. Oh, holy cow. So 8,500 people, 1,200 of them are women who are prostitutes. So... <laughs> I mean, simple math. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen what I'm seeing? There's not, there's not an even number of distribution here. <laughs> okay, go on. Anyways, <laughs> um, so robbery, violence, and alcohol dependency were commonplace, and the endemic poverty drove many women to prostitution to survive on a daily basis. Uh, the large number of attacks against women in the East End during this time adds uncertainty to how many victims were actually murdered by the same individual. 11 separate murders stretching from the 3rd of April, 1888 to the 13th of February, 1891 were included in a Metropolitan Police investigation and were known collectively in the police docket as the Whitechapel murders. Okay, so it's 11 women. Okay. Yes. Got it. Opinions vary as to whether these murders should be linked to the same culprit, but five of the 11 Whitechapel murders, known as the Canical Five, the five victims being Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly, are widely to be the work of the Ripper. Uh, Most experts point to the deep slash wounds to the throat, followed by extensive abdominal and genital area mutilation, the removal of internal internal organs, and progressive facial mutilations as the distinctive features of the Ripper's modus operandi. So. Oh, I don't know why that was really hard to hear. Yeah, well. Because it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Why? (laughs) I'm sorry, Chris. It's okay. I know you hate these ones. I'm along for the ride. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, Buckle up, bucko. (laughs) I know. I got it. So the first person um, to be killed was Marianne Nichols. Um, uh, Out of this five, uh, out of the canical five, um, Marianne Nichols was discovered Friday the 31st of August of 1888 in Bucks Row. This is 
where it gets heavy. It's oh, this gonna, is where it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to describe okay. what happened. So okay. she was found um, with her throat severed by two deep cuts. Okay. One of which completely severed all the tissue down to her vertebrae. Thorough. Her <laughs> vagina had been stabbed twice. Oh, my God. And the lower part of her abdomen was partly ripped open by a deep, jagged wound, causing her bowels to protrude. Several other incisions inflicted to both sides of her abdomen also had been caused by the same knife. Each of these wounds had been inflicted in a downward thrusting, ma- thrust- thrusting manner. <laughs> okay. This is painful to hear. One week later, I just don't does care. anyone else's balls hurt? <laughs> <laughs> My vagina hurts. <laughs> Dude, it's like just, I don't get how people can do that. And they're not people. Psychopaths, man. Right. Well, I mean, the, exactly. They're not people at all. Their brains don't work the same. Like legit, do you, like when you hear mm. these things, does it make anything else hurt? Yeah. Just mm-hmm. me is like no. Z- it's just oh, I, gotcha. I get tense. Sympathetic pains in yeah. the crotchal region? No, no, no. Crotchal. Okay. One week later, ah. Saturday 8th of September, 1888, uh, the body of Annie Chapman was discovered at 6 a.m. near the steps to her doorway at the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street. So how far apart was, was that? Sorry. One week later. One week. Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, her throat was also severed by two deep cuts. Her abdomen had been cut entirely open with a section of the flesh from her stomach being placed upon her left shoulder and another section of skin and flesh plus her small intestines being removed and placed above her right shoulder. Uh, Chapman's autopsy also revealed that her uterus and sections of her bladder uh, and vagina had been removed. At the inquest of Chapman's murder, Elizabeth Long um, described having seen Chapman standing outside 29 Hanbury Street at 5.30 5.30 a.m., so half an hour before they found her murdered. Uh, she was found at 5.30 a.m. in company of a dark-haired man wearing a brown deer stalker hat and dark overcoat and a shabby, genteel appearance. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Hmm. I don't know what a shabby, genteel appearance is. Cam? It's a funny way of saying anything. Shabby, shabby gen- genteel. G-E-N-T-E-E-L. Shab- Whoa. Don't look at it. <laughs> what do you look it up? Nothing, nothing. Hmm. Oh. Trying that. to maintain dignity and self-respect despite shabbiness. So okay. shabbiness is like grungy. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of grungy. Maybe longer beard. Proud, know. feeling self-respect or pleasure in something by which you measure your self-worth. Now, wasn't it, wasn't it said that these, uh, these were oh. done with like surgical? It was a razor pres- blade, like a. Yeah, but like, 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 like a, a like a pen razor. shaving yeah, razor. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't want to jump ahead if you're going to get to it, but I, I heard that with some of them that the organs that were removed, you had to know where those organs were at. And yeah. so it was believed that he was like a doctor or, sort of, or medical yeah, student of some sort. gets into that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were both killed in the early mornings Hours of Sunday, the 30th of September, 1888. Um, so we are about a month later after the first killing. Um, her body was discovered at the Burner Street in Whitechapel. Um, this one, they believe he was actually stopped um, or was someone had interrupted, uh, interrupted him um, because her death was just a single clear cut incision measuring six inches across her neck which had severed her left cauterid artery and her trachea before termina- terminating beneath her right jaw. Uh, the absence of any further mutilations to her body was led to uncertainty as whether Stride's murder was committed by the Ripper or whether it was he was interrupted during the attack. Um, Edo's body was found in the corner of Mitre Square in the city of London three quarters of an hour after the discovery of the body of Elizabeth Stride. How long? How long after? 45 minutes after. Oh, wow. Yeah, just 45 minutes after the other body was found. Her throat was severed from ear to ear, and her abdomen ripped open by a long, deep, and jagged wound before her intestines had been placed over her right shoulder with a section of intestine between uh, being completely detached and placed between her body and her left arm. 
The left kidney in the major part of Edo's uterus had been removed, and her face had been disfigured with her nose severed, her cheeks slashed, cuts measuring a quarter of an inch and a half of an inch respectively vertically incised through the each of her eyelids, a triangular incision, the apex of which pointed towards Edo's eye, had also been carved upon each of her cheeks, and a section of the, of the, uh, the quirkle and lobe of her right ear was later uh, recovered from her clothing. The police surgeon who conducted the post-mortem uh, of her body stated his opinion these mutilations would have taken at least five minutes to complete. Good heavens. So it says, it says there's clean cuts and jagged cuts. So is he yes. using like multiple? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Using. I think he had like a kill. He had a kill weapon. A plethora of tools. And then his his surgical surgical weapon. Yeah. Would be my guess. I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, but that's. But. Yeah. I'm just saying it's jagged cut uh, across the abdomen, and then it's clean. But then it's clean across the throat. So yeah. the kill weapon would have been surgical. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand know. the jagged cut either. Right. Yeah, that kind of threw me off. Maybe he was just a little too hasty. Like I think to get to get everything open, he was going f- quicker, but then yeah. he was more precise. Right. That could be. Oh, I think man. it's crazy that 45 minutes later they find this one, so it's almost as if like he was interrupted on the one and, and he still had, had still had that itch. He had to get so he had to hurry and go. Yeah, had to go yeah. do something else. Oh. Um, Gnarly. I don't. Oh, man, I'm so uncomfortable. The extensively mutilated and disemboweled body of Mary Jane Kelly was discovered lying on the bed in a single room where she lived at 13 Miller's mm-hmm. Court off Dorset Street on Friday, n- the 9th of November, 1888. Her face had been hacked beyond all recognition, with her throat severed down to the spine, and the abdomen almost emptied of its organs. Her uterus, kidneys, and one breast had been placed beneath her head, and other uh, uh, viscera. Viscera. Are you reading it? How? Did you find where I got this from? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, from her body placed <laughs> beside her foot, uh, about the bed and sections of her abdomen and thighs upon a bedside table. Uh, the heart was also missing from the crime scene. Oh my gosh. So. Um, each of the Canical Five murders uh, was perpetrated at night, on or close to a weekend, either at the end of the month or a week um, or so after. Uh, the mutilations became increasingly severe as the series of murders proceeded, except for that of Stride, who the attacker might have been interrupted. Uh, Mary Jane Kelly is generally considered to be the Ripper's, ripple, uh, Ripper's final victim and is assumed that the crimes ended because of the culprit's death, imprisonment, Instu- in blah, 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 institutionalization. Institutionalization. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, or immigration. Uh, the Whitechapel murders file details other four murders that occurred after the uh, canonical, uh, canonical. Holy hell. <laughs> Cano- <laughs> canonical. Canonical five. Gosh. Uh, those of Rose Millette, Alice McKenzie, the Pynchon Street Torso. What? And Wait, what? Francis Coles. She, the, she doesn't even have a name. The Pynchon no, Street, Street Torso. Street Torso. Like, is that all they Straight found? Up I, I torso. assume that's probably that's all they found. I didn't oh. really look into those. Um. So it See, says, and he also he he went after their like reproductive organs. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. Because I heard I heard something that it had to do with. The fact that they were prostitutes and he was like almost sickened by it. Yeah. Oh, I think I have heard some about that. Yeah. So um says more than 2,000 people were interviewed. Upwards of 300 people were investigated. And 80 people were detained following the murders of Strident Eddowes. The commissioner of the city police, Sir James Frazier, offered a reward of 500 pounds for the arrest of the Ripper. Butchers, slaughters, and surgeons and physicians were suspected because of the manner of the mutilations. A surviving note from Major uh, Henry Smith, acting commissioner of the city police, indicates that the alibis of local butchers and slaughterers were investigated with the result that they were eliminated uh, from the inquiry. A report from Inspector Swanson to the Home Office confirms that 76 butchers 
and slaughterers were visited and that the inquiry encompassed all of their employees for the previous six months. To no avail, not finding anything. So wait, are they saying that they never caught Jack the Ripper? No. No. They never caught him? No. Nobody knows who he was. So these are the 10 people suspected of being Jack the Ripper. Um, through all the studies and everything that they've, they've been able to do throughout the years. Um, first one being Lewis Carroll. Oh, yeah. Does the name sound familiar? No. Mm-hmm. Writer. Um, I can't remember what books he wrote, but <laughs> he's a writer. I, I want to say, was it Alice in Wonderland? Super famous writer. No. He... I never read yeah, books. He wrote, he wrote Alice in <laughs> yeah. Wonderland. His poems, Jabberwocky and the Hunting Snark. Hunting of a Snark. I think Alice in Wonderland is his yeah. biggest thing, though. So it says here in 1996, in his 1996 book, Jack the Ripper, Lighthearted Friend, author Richard Wallace alleged that Lewis Carroll, um, whose real name was Charles L. Dodgson, committed the murders. According to Wallace, Carroll had confessed in the form of anagrams within his correspondence and liter- liter- literary works, including the nursery Alice, a young childhood ver- child children's version of the most notable work, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. In theory, Carol, who lived in Oxford, could have taken the train to London to commit the murders, but otherwise, there was never much evidence pointing to Carol being the Ripper. So, number two, which is the guy Tony was talking about earlier, H.H. Holmes. Ooh, that guy's a freak. Yes. (laughs) This is the one I honestly, I could really see him being the Ripper. Yeah. Uh, Story of H.H. Holmes was a Chicago murderer uh, who had... Basically, um, let's see. It says here. Uh, we should do a deep dive on that. Yeah, H. H. Holmes is insane. What is it? Basically, created a essentially like a giant murder house. Yeah, he created. He it was a, a Chicago murder castle. Yeah, yeah. He had hidden walls, hidden pathways, so, all kinds of torture devices. From what I understand, the the TV series um, American Horror Story, the hotel season is apparently. An O to H.H. H. Holmes? Yeah. Oh, weird. I've never um, seen any of those. Dude, it's, it's, I've, I've only dabbled a little bit into reading about it. It's nuts, the things the guy got away with. So um, so there was they actually did a thing on the History Channel um, with Holmes' great-great-grandson, Jeff Mudgett, um, where they investigated the theory that Holmes killed in Whitechapel before he came to the White City. Uh, according to Mudgett, Holmes' handwriting matched letters supposedly sent by the Ripper to police. And his description was similar to a person's eyewitness described near the scenes of the Whitechapel murders. Uh, it says it all made some interesting television, but that's, you know, about it. Um, they said they could put together a better case that Holmes was innocent than it was than he was Jack the Ripper. Um, but he, he, this guy who goes on in the Chicago Tribune says, I don't think he was innocent. His evidence that Holmes wasn't the Ripper documenting of things like Holmes voter registration, which placed him in Chicago at the time the Ripper was killing across the pond. So, but they believe that H.H. H. Holmes started out there and then moved to Chicago, changed Maybe his it was name. inspired by? Yeah, anything like that. So, um, number three, Lord Randolph Churchill. Uh, his son Winston became one of the most important people of the 20th century. Winston Churchill. Uh, but was Lord Randolph Churchill one of the most inf- infamous of the 19th? This theory has Churchill as the head of a group of Masons conspiring to kill sex workers that were blackmailing a member of the royal family. One supposed piece of evidence is an extraordinary detailed description of a man seen with Mary Kelly, the last of the, con- uh, the, the canonical five. Uh, shortly before her death, the suspect was described as a well-dressed, with his attire accessorized by gold watch chain. He was about five feet, six inches tall with dark hair and a mustache. Um, so, oh. yeah. That, uh, um, the movie From Hell with Johnny Depp. Yeah. About Jack the Ripper. Have you guys seen it? No. Nope. <laughs> um, I, I highly, I mean, it's graphic. It's, but it follows the basically all the facts that Zach's read so far, it follows them pretty dang close. Like it even has all the prostitutes names and everything like that. But, um, this particular guy is kind of the story that that follows because it's, uh, 
it's like one Randolph of the, Churchill. Well, not so much him, but it's that story that. Oh, it's, okay. Um, one of the prostitutes is pregnant with like some royalty's baby. Oh, okay. It makes I was thinking something like that with how and, much she goes after the uterus and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and um, I mean, I don't, I don't want want to spoil it, but would you guys? No, you're think, good. Don't spoil. It. Okay. I still want to watch it. Oh, you haven't I've never seen it? seen it? No. Oh, okay. I won't spoil I still anything really then. Watch that well, one, it's actually. but it's funny because that that is the title of one of Jack the Ripper's actual letters. letters. Yeah. yeah, from hell. Yes. Yeah. You want to re- you want to hear it? Go yes. for it. The yes. actual letter. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. So he sent this letter. The letter was sent alongside half of a preserved human kidney to George Lusk, the chairman of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, in October of eighteen eighty eight. It reads, from hell, Mr. Lusk. Sore, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman. Preserved. He could not spell. <laughs> preserved it for you. T'other piece? I fried and ate it. Oh, the other piece. I fried and ate it. Gosh. <laughs> it was very nice. He spelled nice, N-I-S-E. I may send you the bloody knife that took it out if you uh, only wait a while longer. Signed, catch me when you can, catch me when you can, Mr. Lusk. So I don't know if this is just 1880s English or like the thing is riddled with no, that's misspellings. just English, Cam. It's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what if it was a ruse? What if it was like maybe it's yeah. a, like, what if it's a code? code? What if it's a code? Yeah. Or like, like well, he's could trying be to a code, kind of like the uh, like the zodiac. Yeah. Or yeah, he's trying, trying to, fake to fake it, it, make him look like a different person who's not knowledgeable or anything. An author wouldn't want that. Probably killed the author just trying to write that letter. Mm-hmm. Probably corrupted right. his mindset. <laughs> yeah, after the letter, yep. like, damn, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Weird. That's crazy. But yeah, the, highly recommend the movie, though. I yeah. really do. It's. I didn't even know that he made one. Yeah. Because wasn't Sweeney Todd, is that based on a different ki- serial killer? I don't think that one's yes. based on a... It is, actually. Is it? I, thought yeah. it was. I thought it was based on a play. It was a play. It's it is a play. A play. But, but it uh, is it is based off of like loosely real, based off of actual huh. person, I if I remember was, right. Huh. So Jack the Ripper, how fictional. many people did he kill? So they estimate up to eleven, but they can only with with how the murders happened, um, they believe it was only five. They can actually connect five. Yeah, they but. can connect five to the same killer. But between those times, there was 11 that had same. Unless. Well, I mean. It was that guy who knew what he was doing and was trying to get him off the trail to make it seem like it was. It could. But from the research of serial killers, a lot of serial killers don't trail away from. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was the guy trying to cover up something. Yeah. With the royal family. Could be. Huh. I'm um, just saying that euthanasia guy. Those are ram- those two, are rookie numbers or 250 what? <laughs> 250 women, man, right? versus 11. Like right? I've never That's heard the of the other it, guy. I I think it's the way that it's the malice. It's the, it's, malice it's the way that. that Jack the Ripper did it. Yeah. It was, Plus, it's a hundred years difference. Yeah, and a lot of these times too, a lot of them were in plain sight. Like, could have happened anywhere to anyone type thing. And yeah, usually five day, o'clock you know. in the morning down a dark alleyway. Oh. Yeah, in the London fog. So That's um, crazy. Number four is Dr. Thomas Cream. Uh, he was known as the Lambeth Poisoner. Uh, Dr. Thomas Cream was estimated to have poisoned as many as 10 people in three countries, was executed in his murder sways in London in 1892. Um, his last words were reputed to have been, I am Jack, just as the trap door opened on the gallows. While his handwriting looks similar to some of the letters the Ripper sent to police, Cream was in prison in Illinois when the Ripper murders took place. Um, so the report about Cream's gallows confession didn't appear until well after his death. One contemporary report notes that he died without making any confession. Wow. So uh, Prince Albert Victor. Um, there are several theories that an heir to the British throne was responsible for the Ripper murders. One of them originates in 1970 article published by an uh, octogenarian doctor that detailed his friendship with the family of the royal physician. The author, Dr. Thomas Stowell, seemed to heavily imply, without naming names, 
that Prince Albert Victor, Queen Victoria's grandson, had contracted syphilis. Um, his death at 28 in 1892 was attributed to influenza and murdered several ladies of the evening in retribution. Uh, another theory alleges that the prince married a Whitechapel woman and had a baby with her. Witnesses were supposedly eliminated to keep the potential heir a secret. Um, this is the plot of the graphic novel and movie From Hell. It's title taken from one of the Ripper letters. At any rate, Prince Albert Victor was out of town when some of the murders did occur, though. Gotcha. So... Out of town. Exactly. <laughs> out of town. I had an alibi. Um, mm -hmm. James Maybrook in London in 1889. Florence Maybrook was convicted of poisoning her husband, James, and sentenced to death. The sentence was later commuted to life, and she was released in 1904. Um, more than a century later, a remarkable diary came to light. The diarist who didn't give his own name but is presumed to be James Maybrook, detailed the five canonical murders. A man named Michael Barrett presented the diary publicly after he said it was given to him by a family friend. He later said it was a forgery, then recanted his statements. Um, its veracity is still up for debate, though. Huh. So he said it was forged, but they still can't determine whether it really was forged or not. And it was the diary ex describing it, the five murders? Yeah, diary describing the five murders who they believe was the diary of James Maybrick. So, which is, would be why possibly he was poisoned by his wife. So, um, and that's the other thing. So, um, all, when these guys died, that's what also led them up. Cause this murder stopped in like, what was it? 1892, I think is what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of these guys had died and then, yeah, or 1891. So that's what they also believe, too. So uh, anyways, my, Michael Maybrick. James's brother, Michael, was one of the most famous singer-songwriters of his day. Uh, working under the name Stephen Adams, writer-director Bruce Robinson alleges that Maybrick loathed his sister-in-law and committed the murders to frame his brother. Uh, Robinson further suggests that the evidence linking Maybrick, a Freemason, to the crimes was destroyed by police feeding into the numerous conspiracies that the Ripper killed his victims as part of a Masonic ritual and was protected by the organization which had friends in high places in Victorian England. Gosh. Um, a lot to take in. Walter Sickert was a Victorian-era painter. Uh, he was known for chron uh, uh, chronicling London's seamy side. He claimed to have lived, lived in the Ripper's former home. And evil entitled one of his paintings, Jack the Ripper's Bedroom, um, which was bought dozens of his, uh, or it says a crime novelist, uh, bought dozens of his paintings to try to prove that he was not only a contemporary of the Ripper, but the murderer himself. And said as much in her 2002 book, Portrait of a Killer, Jack the Ripper, Case Closed. And the book, Cornwell says that Sickert's paintings demonstrates violence and misogyny and draws together circumstantial and forensic, forensic evidence to make a case um, that was not believed to be particularly compelling, especially because there's evidence Sickert was in France, at least at some of the murders. So so no real clear lead. No. That's, but lots of... There's a lot of who done it, but yeah, not a lot of... There's a lot leads. of, hey, it might have been him, but he wasn't there at the time. Yeah. yeah. There's like, that's with like five of them. Yeah. yeah. Who took the cookie? The cookie jar. Um, <laughs> oh no, it's who took the uterus from the prostitute. <laughs> oh who took God. the uterus so, from the prostitute? <laughs> oh, <geez>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little. That was creepy. <laughs> 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 um, who, I almost, I know I was fighting not to say, not me. I know. Couldn't be. Who, <laughs> then who? <laughs> who was it you? <laughs> so another theory is a mad midwife. Almost since the killings happened, there has been a theory that the killer wasn't Jack the Ripper, but Jill the oh, Ripper. Oh my goodness. The killings demonstrated a knowledge of anatomy, the kind that a woman who delivered babies and maybe performed the occasional abortion. Um, would possess. 
Also, a midwife wouldn't be viewed with suspicious walking around London at night with bloodstained clothes. The theory is not treated as particularly credible, um, but nonetheless. Oh, that's a good twist. Right? Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, these are, the, like I said, the top 10 who they believe that did it. Um, and this one actually, um, this one actually kind of, it's, it's, it's a good one. It does. It actually is. So his name is uh, Aaron Kosminski. Kosminski. He is one of the few remaining pieces of evidence from the Ripper case in a shawl. Uh, or no, so sorry. One of the few remaining pieces of evidence from the Ripper's case in a shawl said to belong to Catherine Eddowes, the fourth of the, the, cano- the canical five victims, stains on the shawl believed to be the blood and semen were DNA tested and found to match descendants of Kosminski, a Polish barber who immigrated to London and may have been a prime suspect at the time of the killings. He was said to have heard voices and hallucinated and in 1891 was sent to an asylum after threats of violence with a knife. But the DNA testing is imprecise, and the shawl's uh, provenance is sketchy at best, so it's unknown if it's actually related to the crimes. But murder stop in 1891. Aaron Kosminski gets sent to an asylum in 1891 Mm. for the rest of his life. DNA tests. Put them there. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's that's probably the one that makes the most sense. But they can't. It, everything's so far down the line that they can't really yeah. see with that one. Because like with the others, how it was saying that at the time of some of the murders, they weren't even in the same country, yeah. or area or whatever. Where him, it strictly just comes down to the DNA test is kind of a little hazy. Yeah. And this one's saying this one's saying he's a Polish barber who immigrated to London. I wonder if this is what Sweeney, uh, Todd. Sweeney Todd might have been based on a little bit. I was thinking that too. So yeah. Eric took the cookie from the prostitute. Eric. <laughs> Aaron. Er- Aaron. Aaron. Dang it! Ah. <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> and it's not a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> it can be called that. Touche. <laughs> so. Uh. What? I was saying the touche's the other side. But because you said touche. Anyway. I said cookie. <laughs> you, said, you said touche, though, after. I was like, oh, touche's the other side. Touche's the other side. It was dumb. <laughs> it's it was funny. not appropriate. Oh, dude. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's always been one of the most fascinating and terrifying and creepy, but interesting stories ever. It, it, oh, I think the biggest, I hate it. I think the biggest yeah. thing about it is, is it's, it's, so I, heinous. Yeah. I was gonna say and I, that nobody, the nobody time knows who he is. It was yeah, heinous. Like I read something somewhere. Everyone that was that's terrified. Why it was so that's why it was so famous in a sense was because of the brutality of it for that time. Yeah, is yeah. Yeah, that is crazy. But rookie numbers. <laughs> Act, rookie. You actually want to know what really happened to Jack the Ripper? Huh. Jackie Ch- Jackie Chan defeated him. <laughs> what? Have you never Is that a seen? Movie? Yeah, well, uh, with him and Owen Wilson. Shanghai Noon. Yeah, oh, Shanghai Noon. Shanghai Nights. Oh, do they you not remember that part? I don't, no. It's been so forever since I've seen that. His one. sister's there, and they're at like a brothel, and Jackie Chan or no, Chris Rock is is um like I can't remember what happens. Anyways, the sister runs out of the hotel room. And she ends up going down like a dark alley or like somewhere by a bridge. And no, maybe it's his sister who kills him because someone ends up coming up to her with a knife to his thing. And it looks like Jack the Ripper because how he was in a, in a shawl or in the, yeah. the over jacket or whatever it's mm-hmm. called. And big overcoat. Yeah. Big overcoat and everything. And like, she ends up like punching him or doing some Chinese moves on him and ends up going over the bridge and he like dies. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> did that sound racist? Martial arts. <laughs> Martial arts. Really racist. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> Chinese moves. <laughs> <laughs> she did like some Chinese moves on him. Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to come out that way. 
It's all right. It's late. You're on drugs. It's fine. I am. I'm on, I'm on painkillers. We should have maybe prefaced this whole episode. Like, okay, we're letting this guy leave. He's on drugs. Oh, that, that's why I couldn't read half the crap. Hey, I thought you did great. You did great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call him that from now on. Chinese moves. <laughs> oh, Why do you call them that? Because they're from China. 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 Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, I heard a few people. I cannot remember. I was trying to go back to the comments. Um, a couple of the uh, people have commented on our post before about doing some UK murders. Oh, they, yeah. they named them specifically, and I couldn't find them. So that was the round I was trying to go, and then I thought, well, maybe I could just do Notorious, and hopefully maybe I hit him. But then I saw a few people asking us to do a deep dive on Jack the Ripper, and Jeez. that's about as close as a deep dive I think we could I get on it. I think that covered it. So, but I don't, I don't know how much deeper we could get on Jack the Ripper. So, Yeah. Well, um, I want to I wanna do, like, legit deep dives. Like kind of like what we did back on uh, who's that guy here in Utah? Can they give his Ted name? Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. Yeah. Anyway, like Chris a full timeline. Like yeah, whole timeline, all that. I mean, stuff. I thought that was pretty dang good. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know what else that would cover. Yeah, there's really not no, much else to cover. That's I mean, it's it. two years. Yeah, it's not two, three years. You, yeah, that, that is everything we know, and that's the problem is we don't like we don't because well, it just and that's stopped. Childhood, so there was no resolution yeah. to any that's of it. That's the other stopped. thing too is a lot of the evidence and stuff that the police had documented during the times. Um, there was a lot of stuff that was destroyed in the what was it called? There was the bombings of uh, in London, um, like World War One or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Can't they? Call it a specific event, but anyways, it, it ruined a lot of the police evidence and stuff, and so uh, that kind of doesn't help anything either. Yeah, there's like fires of London and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the fires. It was some huge. I can't remember what they called it. I forgot. Yeah. I came across it. Is that where the song the "London, London Bridge is Burning Down"? Yeah. Falling, down. falling down. Falling down. That's what it is. Yeah. It was. It was like a. Yeah, the like Great Fire of London. Yeah. That was in 1666. Oh, oh. Ew, gross. Look up like way the earlier. bombings of London. See if there's... But that was World War II. Was it, uh, was it would have been World II? War I. I thought it was World War One. It would have been World War One. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, a lot in of the... the 1880s? It was 1914. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I don't know. So in the yeah. last of this stuff, so I mean, you're you're 20 years after the fact, and oh. then the bombings happen, the and bombing of London. That was right. World War II. That was World War II, correct? Oh, mm -hmm. the Blitz. The Blitz. Sometimes yeah. I know things. Yeah, the Blitz. That's what it was called. And they they lost a, a lot of the police commissioners and stuff like that. All the evidence that they had through the years. Yeah, but I mean, it was lost. 20 years removed, so it's like well, if it was World War II. Point, that was almost 60 years removed. Yeah, World War II, 60 years removed. Oh. But at the same time, they had that shawl that had DNA on it that they finally did matching on it. So When did they me. do the test? Huh? Did it say when they did that DNA test? I don't test? recall ever reading when they did the test. Because I feel like they need to try again now with the technology today, assuming yeah. that it wasn't recent. Yeah. Well, it's so intriguing because it's there was no closure with it, right? Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Luckily, yeah. I mean... It's an open-ended horror story. It really is, because at this point, there's no way of right. whoever it is took it to their grave. I mean, yeah, unless there's some evidentiary remains that we've yet to find on it. I don't know. Somewhere in a in a It'd book, be somewhere nuts a diary. To find out you're or, related. Yeah, right? grouse. Finding a, a diary somewhere that details everything find down out to your the great great grandfather. Now, however many London grades. was bombed in World War II, also. I know we just said that. You mean World War One? Oh, sorry, World War One. <laughs> one, yeah. A um, hundred bombs were dropped wow. on the thirteenth of June, nineteen seventeen. Mm -hmm. So, so that would have been twenty years removed. That right would have been twenty mm -hmm. years ish removed. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, that's all I've got. All Great. right. Hope you guys enjoy. Sorry, Ding. Chris. I need to yes, know yes. how many of you women. Just didn't even wince. They were just probably like be bopping, you know, <laughs> work out. It's like, oh yeah, I've heard right, this exactly. <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Oh, that's no big deal. Uh -huh. mm. 
Yeah, no, I know all about him. I, <laughs> honestly, I, probably I think eat I, lasagna, not even thinking about it. That's why what lasagna? Because <laughs> <That's laughs> it, horrible. Because it looks like guts. It that's, does. Why, that's exactly why I said it. Mushy and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I fine, think fine the, cuisine. I, I'm not. I've I've mentioned you guys before. Like none of this this bunch stuff of raviolis. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's a roast beef. Oh. Well, I'm thinking the Arby's. Oh. <laughs> You're thinking Arby's. No, Max I'm thinking wound? the lasagna noodles. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> wow. I got I you. I see where you're going with that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, no, like I said, I this stuff doesn't phase me. I don't know why. I want to commend it, you though. It's 1:30 in the morning. You are on drugs. Noise. Got a port in your chest. <laughs> And uh, you mm-hmm. you you did it. You pulled it together, buddy. I tried Killed to. Killed it. Oh, no man. pun well intended. Done. Well done. <laughs> 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 One of us was gonna do it. I was. I was at the beginning of this. I was like, who's gonna say it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> Who thought we'd be here? Not right? me. Not me. <laughs> right. So, anyways, if you stick around, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Hashtag Jack. There you go. All right. Hashtag Jack. Hashtag jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one better. Jacked. With the E D on the jacked. end. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys. Yeah. Um, please like, subscribe, spread the word. Um, that honestly will help us the most. If you need a good um, laugh after this one, check out the previous podcast. Yeah, go look at some <laughs> yes. previous stuff. So <laughs> Uh, go back and watch some of our old stuff. That's good classic comedy gold. There. Good fun. <laughs> Every good once fun. in a while, I'll watch some of our old stuff. Oh man, it, oh, it cracks me. Puts up. me in tears sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys. Love you. Yep. Thanks for being a part of this crowd. Love you guys. See, See you yeah. next time. Ciao. Arrivederci. Auf Wiedersehen.